Hello everybody, my name's Mr Lee, David Carr, and I'm back again. So, I wanted to talk about this subject. I thought this was a, another interesting subject. Okay, so I want to talk about the feeling of knowing that you're trans. Okay, so when you look at trans people, you, you need to discover yourself. That is the most important thing. And you need to, uh, well, you, you, you can't tell people that they're trans. You can't do that. You need to, you know, from experience, and it's from my own experience that, you know, I can relate to other people by, should I say, getting involved, meeting other people like, like myself, and listening to what they've got to say, and what they're going through, and their feelings. Um, and it's not just me going through my experiences and doing the research and reading books and looking at documentaries and everything else. You know, um, it's been able to get out there and start getting involved in local support groups and things like that. <clears throat> so, so what I experienced, you know, it, it, that it might relate to those out there and what, what they're feeling. But not only you know, you know yourself, you know, basically you'll know if you are trans and all those that are subscribing or new to my channel um, I came from a generation that it wasn't even heard of or even spoken about and uh, you know I've mentioned this before and you know I had no guidance no support so basically all I'm saying is there's no rush in these matters do not rush into anything okay take your time with things okay um, the other thing is this is that uh, by you knowing who you are, your gender identity, you know, is to discover yourself and the feelings that you're feeling within yourself. So people, you know, have asked, you know, so you need to figure it out. But I can tell you this, is that I know this, finding, you know, the right products, uh, you need to explore your gender and decide your name and speak to others like yourself uh, mix you know mix it in with feminine or masculine and, and explore what fits with you basically you know I always mixed in with masculine um, I've never really tried the feminine I did once uh, with the girls that are friends and it felt completely uncomfortable as a kid they tried to put nail varnish on me as a kid and it, I, I, it just did not fit with me at all, at all. It felt so uncomfortable. It did not fit. I was always playing around with boys, and, you know, never playing around with my sister and the girls, really, at all. Um, and, uh, you know, by doing that, um, so I knew that, you know, I just felt stressed, anxious, and frustrated. This is the only way I could describe it, basically, as a kid growing up in London. And uh, so, you know, you've you got to do what makes you feel comfortable, what it is that fits with you regarding your gender. But I knew from a very young age, and I felt comfortable being that boy. Although my family and everyone thought I was a bit of a tomboy. I think they thought I was a lesbian. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, as young as two years old, I'd always, uh, ever since then, you know, always sort of played around with my younger brother, he's the youngest, and they were just the three siblings. And I'd go around and play with the boys. I'd play with the boys in the street in London, my brother and all the boys, and get dirty. You know, I'd never play around with my younger sister, who's the middle one, and play with the dolls while she's playing with Barbie. I would just pick the doll up and laugh with the boys and undress it and laugh, which which is what boys do. It wasn't really like that, you know. Um, so looking at it on the funny side of it, I was a typical boy. I was always up to mischief and having a, and getting playing in the dirt and getting dirty and climbing trees and riding bikes and playing football. And that's it. Ever since I was two years old, I pick up a ball. Football's my game. So you know I would always do that. You know, play with cars and so forth. So I never really played with my younger sister or anything like that. You know, it felt it felt uncomfortable for me to. You know, if, if I'd experimented, it did not feel right. Uh, I felt like I, I was in a foreign body. 
Um, which now, you know, body dysphoria, as you call it, no support regarding, you know, your true identity, saying I'm simple, and to explore and uh, and be confident. You know, it's, it's important to take your time being transgender and to, you know, whether you're cross-dressing or, um, you know, anything like that and or taking hormones and deciding a name or re reassignment surgery whether you decide to take that process and go through that to therapy um, to associate with others how you associate with other people um, to right down to sort of getting involved shall I say you know to, and going to events and, and you know it's about it's about how you feel and you know and how they feel and getting getting feedback from others that are like-minded and looking at and listening at their experiences and their feelings and what it is they've been through, you know, with me attending support groups and listening to others about how they feel, their experiences, their journey, what they've gone through and what advice you can get from them too. Attending those support groups and meeting others like yourself, like-minded. So there's that to consider as well. And then... You know, um, going through that, then you can sh sort of start making decisions. And, uh, you know, you may want to attend trans events or events, LGBTQ, and meet trans people there, such as Pride or whatever. And then, you know, it's just to make sure that you, you speak and get in touch with trans organisations is the most important thing. And there are many out there. There's... Um, Others, you know, like-minded like yourself that are trying to find out, meet new people, find out about their gender, what it is, they, you know, the, the younger, younger generation and the younger ones. You've got organisations like Terence Higgins, you've got, um, you've got, you've got the Terence Higgins Trust, you've got GLAD, you've got the Tribe, you've got Trans Bucket, um, you've got you know, go go around and, and meet other friends and partners and people, start getting involved, uh, family, and getting involved with support groups and people, you know, to discover yourself, discover who you are, your true identity to who you are, being true to yourself, how you really feel, and discovering what it is that's comfortable with you when looking at the gender spectrum system, for those out there that feel they're suffering with dysphoria and that they're trans, you know. So you need to sort of look into that, basically. And, um, yeah, just basically be true to yourself before making those decisions, basically. You know, you have to listen and feel what, feel what fits with you. And uh, when you're looking at the gender spectrum now, because it's so vast now, out there to when it was growing up in my generation coming from London although it's very multicultural coming from London you know it wasn't out there at the time we didn't have what you have now it's much more open in society now basically and uh, yeah saying that you know you know just listen to see what fits with you and when you dress up you know maybe have a bit of an experimentation with yourself to see what it is that aligns with you, aligns with who you are, basically, and trying to find yourself. Um, you know, because there might be others out there that think they're pansexual. So, you know, it's not over 50-50. So that's out there, now pansexual. It wasn't around when I was at school. So, you know, find out what it is that fits with you, what makes you feel comfortable, and be true to yourself. You know, when you're you know, when you, especially when you're coming out and you think you're suffering with dysphoria and transgender because there's different types, okay? Um, and then saying that, you know, it's really, really important to, to explore, you know, even as a parent that are trying to, you know, to be open with their child and to be understanding because of what it is their child is going through, you know, having to be supportive towards them and try to be understanding that their child might be trans because of what the child is feeling. So I've came across on, on my travel, on my journey, being around organisations where I've met parents. And one of them I remember came in with a child of 14 years old. She's a school teacher. And she looked frightened. 
she looked scared. And then until I sat down in the group and spoke to her, she turned up on a Sunday afternoon and I spoke to her and that advice I'd given her and then, and then opening up and telling her who I was and the journey that I'd been on, she walked out there a lot happier out, out, out of that organisation that Sunday afternoon. She walked out much happier and feeling a lot better. So it really, really helps to get support out there from people because you never know what they're going through, even as a parent or whether it's a child or whoever, you know, what it is they're going through when it comes to, to issues like transgender, things like that, gender identity, okay? You know, so it's really important there, you know, to have that support network around you, being able to help people out there. So yeah, you need to take that into consideration, basically. So yeah, um, so being supportive, you know, and things like that, what they're going through, and see what it is they like or feel, whether they want to be addressed as he or she, and or if they want to start the hormones, should I say, and what it is they feel, you know, be to sort of be true to themselves and explore what feels comfortable basically and take your time do it privately if you have to figure it out go into a room if you have to and you know experiment find out figure it out for yourself as well take the time but don't rush into anything okay take your time find yourself especially the young teens or those growing up, growing into puberty, you know. I mean, because I think it's cruel. And I mentioned this before, those growing up, going through puberty, that have gone through what I've gone through, or anyone else out there that's going through it. So that's my advice to you people out there, or the younger generation out there, if you've got gender dysphoria or trans, what you need to look into, what you need to think about. Um, trying to give you all the ideas and experiences and suggestions I can give you to help you out there and what it is you can do to find yourself being able to explore, to figure it out and uh, you know, and most importantly it is to listen to you listen to that inner voice inside you what it is you feel only you know so listen to it and whatever it's telling you Go with it, because it's probably right. Don't listen to others. It's about how you really feel. That's the most important thing. It's about how you really feel, okay? So please subscribe. Any questions you want to ask, you can find me on www.leadownycart.com, um, guiding platform. Um, I'm also a book author. There's a second book being released this month, December. Follow the platform, all the podcasts are going out talks about the gender identity crisis I went through. I was born Lisa, that was my name at birth. But, so I'm gonna say love and light to everyone. Any questions you wanna ask, please put the comments down, any comments and uh, I'll give you feedback and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Or you can email me, any comments or so forth. So yeah, speak to you all soon, love and light and namaste. Speak to you soon, bye bye.